ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله الا ان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا اما بعد الله سبحانه وتعالى created us and placed us on earth and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-hakim everything he does he does with hikmah so there is a hikmah for him blessing us on earth and the reality of this earth is that it is a place of uh, trials and hardships that's the nature of it there is another place called jannah where past some people go after they die and then being resurrected there is no hardship none at all there is another place called jahannam where it's just hardship and nothing else and then there is dunya dunya is a mix sometimes you find rest but most of the time it's hardship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says innaka kadihun ila rabbika kadha that in this world you will be in a struggle towards your lord struggling it's a hard work it's not easy so in this world if you find things are a bit difficult or hard then that's how it's supposed to be the world is a place of difficulties and when you get into these difficulties then we as muslims we already know because allah himself told us so we know that all these difficulties these are the, some of the blessings that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us in this world any difficulty you get any hardship you find any problem you have it is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to you so as muslims we when you are given blessings you accept it you don't reject blessings so he say he knows our circumstances he after all created them to target our weaknesses so that we purge and cure them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows our circumstances he says in the Quran ala ya'lamu man khalaqa wa huwa al-latif al-khabir the one who created you does he not know of course he does know and he's latif he knows the subtleties so allah knows everything allah knows the difficulties and he knows the ease he knows the situation he places you in why does allah place us in this difficult situations to target our weaknesses everyone has certain weaknesses that needs to be purged and cured and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that the best way to target this weakness and cure it from this person is to put him in this situation you know we have examples of doctors they analyze your situation and they say you have this ailment and the best thing we can do here is to give you an injection they know that injection is painful it touches your skin goes through there's nerves you feel something a twitch but they know this is good for you and you tell the doctor yes i'll take the injection so that difficulty some other human looks at you and puts you in some difficulty to cure you how about allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
He knows our circumstances. He puts us in those circumstances to cure us. We have an example of a circumstance in which someone is placed in. It's a circumstance where a person has given wealth, a very rich person, and he's sick, he needs to be cured. So Allah gives him a lot of wealth. For example, we say, a miser is given plenty. A lot of wealth then forced to spend a few cents. A price not hefty. Feel the pain, but your soul do mend. This person is a miser. Allah knows this person inside their soul, they are miserly. They have difficulty in giving. So how are they going to cure that difficulty of giving? If they don't have anything to give, then they'll never know. So Allah knows you need to know this. So he gives them lots of wealth. Then he puts them where they have to spend now. They're forced, like, I need to. Then they feel that pain. But they just have to do it. And as they keep doing, the pain keeps going, going, going. And once the dosage is complete, alhamdulillah, they're cured. So any situation Allah puts you is to cure you of some sickness or ailment which you might have in you. So that's a test that Allah gives some people. Lots of pain when they give. But that's the test that they're given to cure them. So he says, so please don't envy the miser. They, just, they suffer just as those in want. You know, someone is a miser, they suffering with a lot of wealth. Another one is wanting. They are still suffering. But everyone is given a test. Look within it, be much wiser. Strengthen your heart, but do not hunt. You have to find a monster within that's hard to fight and you can't cope. Sometimes, what you need to do is look into your heart. Go and fusakum, protect yourselves. Wahalikum nar. Allah says about our hearts that our hearts are supposed to be cleansed. You know, the Prophet was saying to you, Alimuhumul kitaba wal hikma wa yuzakihim. The Prophet is saying to cleanse our hearts. The person who is successful is the one who shall cleanse his heart. So this soul of ours is to be cleansed, and the best way to cleanse it is through these hardships. You see, if it's something which you are okay with, it's not going to be hard. You just do it and you are okay with it. But when you find a difficulty, it's because there's a problem in you. So that problem is solved by you facing that difficulty. But once it becomes easy, it means the problem is gone. Now you look for the next thing. So these fit and they come one after the other, one after the other. You find yourself in a tough situation because of a situation, Allah cures it, you go to another tough situation. It's tough for you because of your sickness. Allah cures it, you go to the next tough situation. So this world is full of these situations. They're only tough because of the sicknesses we have within us. But then we say, don't go looking for, am I sick? Don't go looking into your soul. Don't do a soul searching. We don't do soul searching in Islam. In Islam, we just do what we are told. Give, give. Pray, pray. Fast, fast. If you find something difficult in whatever you are told to do, then you know there's something wrong with me. Don't go hunting what's wrong with me. We don't ask that question, what's wrong with me. You just say, what have I done today? What have I achieved today? Have I pleased Allah enough? What does Allah want from me? Look that way. You only get inside when you find the difficulty in fulfilling a command or staying away from what Allah has prohibited. Don't do a soul search, okay? Just do what Allah wants from you. You will only know that there's a problem when you find something against what Allah wants. So we say, don't look, don't do soul searching. Do what Allah wants from you. He taps you lightly when you sin, so you turn back when there's still hope. Sometimes, Allah gives you a small punishment. Before the big one of Qiyamah, for a reason, so that they turn back to Allah. Sometimes you commit a sin against Allah. Allah wants you to do something, you don't do it. Allah doesn't want you to do something, you engage in it. Then Allah taps you lightly with a problem. Then you start asking yourself, what happened? Why am I suffering? Why is everything not going my way? Have I wronged Allah? That's a very good question. Have I wronged Allah in any way? 
Because when you wrong Allah, this happens. So when you find yourself in a difficulty, part of what you need to ask is, have I wronged Allah? A Nabi of Allah, Yunus alayhi salam, he runs away from his responsibility. He's swallowed by a fish. What does he think? Oh, these people threw me off the boat. No, he thinks something else. He says, the only reason I might be suffering is Allah has something to do with it. When you are suffering, what's the aspect of Allah in that suffering? So he's in the belly of the fish. He says, La ilaha illa anta subhanak inni kuntu min al-dhalimin. Allah, there's no God but you. You are most holy. Indeed, I have been a wrongdoer or of the wrongdoers. So he realizes he must have done something wrong to be in this difficulty. So whatever difficulty you are facing, physical, mental, social, whatever, what wrong did you do to Allah that he places you in that difficulty? Then when the wrong goes away, the difficulty goes away. If it is caused by Allah because of the wrongs which you did. So always ask that question. What have I done against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Another thing we say, empty claims can't be left to stand. Winds of trials must check their roots. You know when people make empty claims, I believe in Allah. MashaAllah, a husband now says, Yaqulu, Yutraku. Will people think that they'll be left? Yeah? So these people think they will be left. Yaqulu, Amanahum, La Yuftanu. Because they say, we believe, but they will not be tested. So you go say, you know, I'm a mathematician. Ask him what is the pi and the dot of square root and all this. He says, I, I've never heard of those things. Say, you are a mathematician, you need to know pi and square root. <laughs> you know, that church says you're not a mathematician. So when you claim anything, I'm a believer. I always stand by the side of Allah, no matter what. Allah said, okay, let's see. He gives you a no matter what. And he says, this is my no matter what. Am I standing by Allah? Or am I going to turn away from Allah? If you stand by Allah, then your words are given tasdiq. They say, this is true. You're a believer. You said something, you claimed it with your mouth, and those claims are not empty. They have been proven by facts. So that gives you trials, puts you in tribulations, some little hardship. Then you start complaining. If you start complaining, we know, oh, you are making false claims. You didn't turn to Allah, you ran to this side. You start blaming Allah for your problems. Then we know you are not truthful in your claim of belief. So when you make claims of belief, even then you'll be tested because you made the claim, I believe in Allah, I'm a mu'min, I'm a believer, we are Muslims, we are people of Allah. Then Allah says, let me see. Are you my people or are you going somewhere else? It gives you a situation to see whether you stand with him, trust him, wait on Allah, or you go away. So part of the blessings is that our iman is made stronger when we are to be after birth during these times of trials. So we say faith stands as lies are overturned. Winds of uh, fire, fast destroyed and faces. When you prefer something else, be patient even as you do salah. Allah says, Wasta'inu bi sabri wa salah. But that's when you prefer something else. You know, when Allah puts you in a tough situation, Allah puts you there for a reason so that you cure yourself, as we say. But then sometimes you prefer not to be in that situation. Allah, you know, you're putting me in this situation for my own good, but please, I prefer not to be here. Allah, I am very sick today. For some reason, you, are, you know why I'm sick, but I prefer to be healthy. So you prefer something else, not that situation. Allah put you there, but you still prefer something else. Then Allah says, when you prefer something else, not the tough situation, then at least be patient. As you do salah, patience is only required when you have your own preference. Or take your pain as jewels that adorn your faith in Allah. Sometimes you can decide, uh -uh, I'm going to take another level. Allah put me in this situation, he knows why. I'm going to take it like a believer, take it like a mu'min. I'll be here until when it's, Allah is done with me, then he'll take me to the next step. So Allah, I'm, I'm here. 
When I'm ready, you tell me the next one. I'm leaving it to you. It's not for me. I'm, I, don't, I don't want out. I want to be in wherever you place me until you take me out. That's a different kind of believer. Some believers, oh Allah, please out, out. Some people like, Allah, I'm okay. You take me out when it's time. So those are two different levels of believers. So you choose. It's not haram to want something else, but you need, it hurts. You have to be patient. It's better to just say, Allah, I'm here. If Allah tells you, get yourself out, please get yourself out. You have to follow the Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't say, I'm sick. Allah, I'm okay. The Prophet says, Tadawu, look for medicine. But it doesn't say it will cure you. It just says, look for medicine. Look for the medicine that you wait in your sickness. Until Allah decides that you're going to get better, then you'll get better. So it doesn't mean don't seek the ways out. But it means whatever you, are, do, you do in seeking the way out won't get you out. It's Allah who will get you out. So do whatever Allah tells you. But say, Allah, you get me out. When I'm done with this, a last time is the best time. Then, at that situation we say, or be grateful your heart got cleaned. Jannah is only for a qalb salim. You can't go to Jannah if your heart is not cleaned. So sometimes Allah gives you trials. Why does Allah give you trials? So that you are cleansed enough to go to Jannah. You know that this Sahaba, he got very sick, and the Prophet he got fever. And the Prophet looked at him and said, La ba'asa, tahurun, inshallah. No problem. This is a cleansing for you. So this person is cleansed. The day of Qiyamah, he has a qalb salim, clean heart. He goes to Jannah. So sometimes you get into these tough situations to cleanse yourself of anything that might be on you so that you go to Jannah. So Allah wants to take you to Jannah. You read Allah wants to make things easier for you. Allah you read Allah also. He doesn't want to make things difficult for you. He only makes it that way so that things become easier later on. Or do you prefer to have a good life in this world, a lifestyle, and then on the day of Qiyamah, Jahannam is awaiting you for a million, 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 million years. Or a good life of 60 years for Jahannam of you just have a few difficulties, a few days of the year, then you go to Jannah forever. No difficulties. So we know these are all blessings in disguise. Every time you get into difficulties, problems, no, Allah is blessing me in so many ways. He wants me to go to Jannah. So that's how we Muslims view these things. Then we say, since hard and ease are both destined, use each in your worship of him. Had Sheep and ease, they both are from the qadr of Allah. He puts, gives you an easy situation, this is qadr. He puts you a tough situation, it's the qadr. You need to use both of them to worship Allah. When things are easy, worship Allah in the easy way. When things are hard, worship Allah using the hardness. You know, there are some du'as you can never make until you get into a problem. And then Nabi said, La ilaha illallah subhanahu He could only say that because kadali kanunjil. Muhsinin, you only Allah was to save him, you needed to make that dua. You never make these duas until you get into problems. Wallahi, sometimes you never have the ikhlas even to remember Allah until you get into a problem. You see left, no help, right, no help. You hold your head like this and you say, Ya Allah. So sometimes that thing takes you back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that difficulty. And Allah wants to hear your voice when you say, Ya Allah. Then says, okay, I've already heard your voice, now you can leave. The difficulty goes away. So everything is good. When all's well, don't exult in pride. When everything is working for you, don't be proud. No, la tafrah, in Allah, you la yuhibbul farihin. Like Karun, he's told, no, don't be proud, this happiness of pride. You know, Allah doesn't like proud people. So when you see things going well for you, it's a test. Do not be proud. And then when things are not going well for you, you should know. When he, he who makes wide does make narrow. Sometimes he makes things good for you. Sometimes the things become narrow for you. But then even then, you cannot be angry at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah, why are things so difficult? 
faida matalahu wa qadara alayhi rizqahu fa yaqulu rabbi ahana oh allah you are disgracing me why are you making this thing so difficult for me no don't be like that person you know when things are going say rabbi akrama when things are difficult say rabbi ahana no this is the problem with the of the non muslim you know says god bless us you know the, the things which we have the goodness is because allah loves us no no matter la hum fil khair allah just gives you some rock for whatever reason he knows but that doesn't mean that allah loves you or hates you when he gives you or denies you he's testing you it's not about love and hate allah might love someone and put them in difficulties how many prophets kutila ma hu ribiyun kathir they were killed even on the followers that's so difficult imagine putting a net on them just it's not easy you know you can have a stomach ache but what if you're being slaughtered that's more difficult prophets they are passing through all these problems why because allah knows so allah doesn't hate them he's just putting them into that situation for hikma qarun and firaun they have everything but allah doesn't love them So don't take anything you have as a sign of Allah's love or anything you don't have as a sign of Allah's hate. These are just trials. That is how we Muslims view this world. We ask Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who listen and understand. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sallam wa sallam. Amma ba'd. And for every pain he allows, there's a wisdom and some purpose. Though we may not what he knows, we know he wants good for us. So every pain that we get is a wisdom and purpose. And we know you read Allah bikumul yusr. Allah wants ease for you. So Allah wants good. Anything we have, we have any situation it doesn't matter even if it's being punished for a sin you commit. Allah is punish you because he wants good out of it so that you don't get punishment in jahannam or something. There is good in it. Every situation you have is because Allah wants good for you. Allah never wants evil for anyone. Especially the the believer. Ajama li amri al-mu'min fa inna amrahu kullahu lahu khair. Every affair of the believer is good for him. So we should know that Allah wants good for us. The secret is that you submit in difficulty and in ease and pray to Allah to admit you into his mercy and bliss. Pray to Allah to take you to jannah you submit in difficulty you submit to allah when things are easy you submit to allah and then you ask allah to take you to jannah but strange creatures we human being problem with this us human being sometimes allah gives you all he gives you ni'ma after ni'ma after ni'ma but then we turn away from him we make him a servant of me to call and dismiss us i deem you know When you have problems, we are Allah. When you are to fulfill, fulfill folk, you get on a ship. Then things go wrong, and oh Allah, save us, save us. When the jahum, the barri, when Allah releases these people to the land, when they are mushrikun, they go being shirk and forgetting about Allah and worshiping their souls and everything else. Like some people, they think Allah is like a nine one one. You only call when you have a problem. You know, you never call nine one one to chat. It's like I have a problem. solve it once it's done nobody cares about 911 so some people treat allah like that only when there's a problem is allah relevant when the problem goes away nobody cares this is the attitude of the mushrik we muslims should not be like that la taqulu kalladina ashraf don't be like them we are muslims we follow allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in isna in difficulty and in is when i blow kum bil khair wa sharri fitna allah gives us tests with difficult good and evil then allah says atasbirun will you be patient janna badakum li badin fitna allah made this fitna some of us to others will we be patient enough just to stick with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so sometimes what happens when we forget sometimes allah gives us these trials gives us more gives us more and then we forget Then what happens? The judgment comes. Baqtatan. Suddenly. So when Allah gives you these little trials so wanting you to remember Allah, to make use of your difficulties, to turn back to Allah, but you don't realize it. You forget about it. 
then Allah seizes you with a terrible punishment, the kind of which you can never get out of ever again. So you take advantage of your hardships to go back to Allah before Allah turns those hardships into real terrible punishments that you can never get out of. You die in kufr, in shirk, you die in a bad situation. Now after that everything is dead. Then another thing we need to know, we should not judge people because of anything we see. So don't judge someone because of their trials. Allah alone knows the reasons. So you never know why this person is in this trial. Don't look at them and say, Wallahi, the only reason this person is suffering, you remember last year? Uh, how do you know? Don't go looking at people, looking around. So and so is suffering because of, you never know. Only Allah knows. That's a darkness that never dawns. The morning never comes from those reasons. So don't go judging others. Somebody in their trial, Allah knows why they are suffering or what he wants out of that. All you can do is tell them, brother, uh, you're going through this. If you did something wrong against Allah, ask for forgiveness. If it's a trial, just be patient or, or, or. But you can't just say, Allah is punishing you because, no, you don't know. Or, Mashallah, brother, this is good. You're going to be part of Jannah. You are a person of Jannah. Just have, you don't know. Just pray for goodness. So we can't go judging people. We don't judge people. We just take things as they are. The Prophet wasallam never used any of this to judge someone. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who listen and understand. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi akhirati hasana wa qina adab al-nar Rabbana la tuzih qulubana ba'da ilha laytana wa ablana min ladunka rahma innaka anta al-wahab Allahumma ja'alna min jundik fa inna jundaka humul khalibun وجعلنا من حزبك فإن حزبك هم المفلحون وجعلنا من أوليائك فإن أوليائك لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون ربنا أتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وصلي اللهم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وأقم الصلاة